Okay, uh, I will make this lecture more like a discussion, so I will need your cooperation, okay? Okay, uh, now uh, the lecture is about um, media autonomy, so the question of autonomy of the media. Uh, and. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, now uh, let me start with the definition. Yeah? What media is? It's really simple. It's a message. Yeah? It's a message from somebody who writes a message. Uh, to somebody who receives a message. Now, my first question for you would be, what, is it just a message? So, uh, basically I'm asking, is media just a message? So, just a tool to send a message, or is something else also with that tool, within that tool? What's your opinion on that? I think it's just a tool, just a way that people send a message, as an outlet to do it. Okay. Any other perspective? And I think that tool can be used like for a greater, like, in in greater context. So, like in the Arab Spring, they use like media and they use all that to strike okay. a revolution. So, I think it's a tool to achieve something greater. Okay. Or something not as great because you can use you can uh, like propagate the media and then do something negative. Okay. So, so basically, media is a tool. That's true. But on the other hand, let me give an example. In a few centuries back, uh, because you know, the first media was actually, let's say, proper public media was written media. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so, but then it came to photography. And they thought this is the most um, realistic media that ever existed. Because photography is on, you see on photography what you see. Yeah? Mm -hmm. but then again, photography is not so true because it, I mean, it's not so realistic as, as it seems it, at the first place because you have somebody behind the camera. Yeah? He can choose the angle, he can choose the position of, of, of the, I don't know, thing that is being photographed. What I'm trying to say is that media is not just a tool. Yeah? It's a message, but there is something behind that message. Yeah? We get the information. I can agree with you on that. But... Uh, Just join Yes, of course, join us. I can agree on that, but still, uh, you get the information, but uh, you have this message with information, but on the other hand, we have some, let's say, hidden messages. What could be the hidden message in some, I don't know, ad or song? information on, on, I don't know. I think because media nowadays specifically is more, it serves the purpose of more influence rather than just information. Like okay. Media has become a tool to influence people rather than to so, get information. That's what I'm trying to say. So media is not just a tool to send a message, but on the other hand is to send, let's say, hidden messages that are basically some values or some stereotypes and so on and so on uh, and they're sending us not just the information but also some hidden messages and we are somehow getting used to that messages I'm not saying so I'm not saying that um, we buy everything we hear or we see yeah but still if you see a lot of crime yeah this doesn't mean, so the first jump would be, okay, the children are looking at, I don't know, cartoons, yeah, and they see violence. And now the first jump would be, they get violent. I don't agree with that, necessarily. But what we are getting, we are getting used to violence, which brings us more tolerant to violence. So we are getting used to that violence, yeah, and we are becoming more tolerant to violence. Nothing else. We are not violent, but we are becoming more tolerant as a society. So, this is an example where media is sending also hidden messages beside this information that they are sending to us. 
What I want to discuss today with you is a few things. First of all, about functions of the media, and we will try to see the autonomy through those functions. So we know basically four functions of the media. The first is uh, they inform, yeah? their informative nature. Now, what do you understand by this informative nature of the media? Anybody? Just jump. Yeah. We learn things from it. Okay, we get some information. We learn from it. Okay. The second would be um, a tool for... Um, could you help me with the word um, socialization? Um, growing up, whatever. Yeah? Do you understand the word, everybody? Yeah or no? Yes or no? Yes. So the process that... It's a tool that helps us with growing up. So it, it, it influences us when we are growing up, basically. Yeah? So in what way? Uh, no, do you mean like uh, ch children education TV or something like that? No, no, no. It's, mm -hmm. it's a process of learning uh, norms, values of the society. So it goes from, I don't know. So like exposure, like it exposes us to... Expo but it starts in the family actually. Mm -hmm. So the family is the first agent to help us when growing up, then school, friends, and so on. And media is a part of it. So media helps us with, I don't know, growing up, let's say. Yeah? So this is the second function yeah, of the media. It somehow help, helps us, yeah? it's, it's, it's part of our lives. Yeah? Okay? And it influences us, which means we are changing our norms, our values, our behavior because of it. Yeah? Okay? The third one, uh, so the third function of the media is actually, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah? Media is fun. Their purpose is entertainment. Entertainment. Yeah. And the last one, really important one, is the interpretation. So media always has some interpretation of the information that are um, coming to us, yeah? So the four functions. Now, because we are discussing about the autonomy of the media, my question would be, if you have, we understand the words um, private media and public media. Mm -hmm. yeah? So private media, media means what? Like stuff that you keep that's personal between two or more people, like private messages, private emails, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Private is when it's in um, ownership of a person. So media, so commercial media is usually owned by people, yeah, but private owners, yeah. When we say public media, yeah, by that we mean uh, that media is in the hand of the state, yeah. Okay, so that's the difference between private and public media. I don't know if you have it in your countries, but I think you have it. Yeah? Public and private media, yeah? mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, let us elaborate a bit through those four functions and the difference between private and um, public media. Yeah? So, the first function we said it was um, informative, yeah? Okay, so what is the nature? How should public media look like? What is the function of public media? What do you think? It, when the case of information, it directly reflects with the people, how we live, what we do, like yeah. things that we see. So in our they day should day. inform us about things that happen around the world, in the country, and so on and so on. Yeah, correct. Okay. Uh, if you compare this kind of information yeah, on public television, yeah, if we compare it, because the commercial media, also, they also have the same four functions, yeah? but if we compare information given on public media and information given on private media, what's the difference? Maybe private media can show some specific elements, some specific, specific view on the, on the situation. Which ones? Uh, what yeah, kind of specific maybe, views? Uh, from the owner, just some policy of the owner of the company. Okay, so, in, yes, that's correct. 
what is in the background? The background is uh, the interest of the media, because the majority of commercial medias uh, are interested in, I don't know, in, in capital, let's say, in, in earning money, yeah? Mm -hmm. More money, it's better, yeah? Because usually, where does this come from? Usually, public media is financed by the state, yeah? Mm -hmm. At least majority, yeah? But private media <clears throat> doesn't get any finances from the state, but they must get finances from ads, let's say, mm -hmm. yeah? Ads are the biggest... Uh, you yeah, have uh, earning tool for private media. Yeah, okay? So, basically, that's why the importance of the audience, so that's why uh, private media uh, gives so much more importance on the audience than public media. Because they're doing researches, what people want to hear, actually. Yeah? And this is the first question of autonomy. Yeah? Which media would you say has more autonomy? Public or private? Public. Public, yeah? But private. still private? Why? Mm, okay, just... No, 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 no. Because we have examples. We have examples of, okay. of public media mm -hmm. in countries like... I can give you examples. Well, repressive regimes. Russia. Not, not only... No, no, no. Not only repressive regimes. Because Russia, they don't have any repression there. They, they just have a strong, really strong president, and that's it, yeah? Okay? No repression there, but still, media is controlled, yeah, by the state. So, it's also a question of autonomy. Now, on the other hand, we have this private interest, yeah? But the, private in the problem with the private interest is that usually, yeah, the only goal is to earn, like we said, the money. And, and if you have this kind of perspective, yeah, then the information you get out, yeah, you have, I don't know, uh, the information about uh, external politics and so on and so on, but you do it in a way that's actually entertaining, yeah, for the people, yeah, and that's the biggest different difference with this function, yeah, being informative, and you don't explain everything, and of course, also public media has can be questioned with this autonomy, like in Russia case. Or, for example, I can give you um, Italy. Do you know uh, Silvio Berlusconi? Ex-Italian, okay, he's ex-Italian president. He owned, uh, if you know the, um, this Italian uh, station, Rai Uno, Due, Tre. So, this, these were the major uh, 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 media houses in, in Italy. Uh, he actually owned them. He was the owner and he was at the same time the president of uh, the state. I think, no, I'm from Italy. I think uh, Berlusconi has the media set and the Rai is of the Yeah, state. afterwards, yeah, he sell them. Yeah, yeah, they, they switch, but still, he yeah, was... Now he is in the media set group. Uh, he's not in the No, Rai. but now he's not uh, a president anymore. No, so. but, but he was, yeah, before. Yeah, yes, but that. he has media set um, yeah, now. Yeah, now, now he has the media set, yeah. But before that, he was a president, he actually owned, yeah, some media that publicly exposed what, of course, the government wanted to see. Yeah? And here is the first question of autonomy. So, media should always be free from politicians, uh, I don't know, private interests, and so on and so on. Uh, the second thing, is um, when we were talking about um, uh, 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 these functions uh, and private and um, public, uh, the second question of autonomy refers to four, let's say, points of analysis. Because there is not... The first point was if some person or, I don't know, the government holds uh, uh, this interest behind uh, the media. Now the second point is if we don't have any persons behind it but still we have some misrepresented information. Yeah? I would like to elaborate it in four points. First is representation of the gender in the media. The second will be representation of uh, race or ethnicity. Yeah. 
Uh, the third will be mm, rep representation of, let's say, social classes. Okay. And if we still have time, we'll discuss more about representation of, let's say, young and old people. Okay? You will see where I'm going. So, first was representation of the gender. How are <coughs> women represented in the media? What would you say? Yeah. Uh, highly sexual. So, uh, women are m uh, most of the time uh, represented more sexual than men. For example, when you take superheroes, like the man is always really strong while the woman wears very, very short clothing. Okay, stereotypes. Yeah, totally. What else? So, sexuality. What else? More like inferior, that inferior? We, we need In like a strong man figure just okay. to help us. Okay, inferior towards men. What else? Vulnerable. Vulnerable, yeah. Passive, yeah. 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 And it comes, it's not just that, you know, it's not just television, it's not just internet. Look at the, I don't know, the stories for children. I don't know, there's always some Cinderella that cannot do nothing and the prince, I don't know, climbs and yeah. saves her and he's really active and you know where I'm going? Mm -hmm. And yeah. the female role is always a bit passive, waiting for just being pretty, yeah? Pretty in, 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 in children's stories, today's, today means sexy in another story, if you know where <coughs> I'm going. So, what is behind it? What is behind it? Is that, an, can we speak here about autonomy? If, I don't know, in, in commercial for, 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 I don't know, um, dishwasher is always a woman, yeah? Like domestic stuff and so on. So what is behind it? Here we don't have any government, we don't have an owner who would prefer that, basically, yes. Uh, it's like that in the past it was a woman who would uh, care for the house, who would do the domestic stuff, and it's like still in our um, like kind of ideology that it's a woman who should uh, care for the house, so they put this in the advertising because this is what the broader public thinks. Mm -hmm. So, basically where I'm going with these four points is that in the first case that we were dis discussing, you have behind a person or a government or a state or something like that. But autonomy can be also questioned by something that is not a person, but let's say it's something, if you know what I mean. Author autonomy is, can be questioned not be only because of politician that wants to rule his country in a way, but can only also be questioned, I don't know, with stereotypes that are traditional in some society. Yeah? And we are rebuilding them with, with this media representation. Yeah? Uh, our second point, okay, is, would you like anything to add here? Because, uh, because the second thing is, is the reality. Uh, let's say women, made a lot of progress, I don't know, the feminist movements and so on and so on. But the reality, the statistics are still showing that the majority of domestic work is done by women. Even though the role changed and so on, but the majority is still done by women. The statistics are showing that women are more educated than men. That's a fact. But still, they are in lower positions in the society Never mind with society, in good society. The most democratic and free societies have women in inferior positions. Yeah? If we see politics, you can see for yourself. Yeah? So, it's, so basically what I'm trying to say that media reflects something that is actually happening. And what are we, what are we as observers getting from it? Like I said, if you're watching uh, uh, I don't know, a violent act in, in the television. You are not becoming violent, but you are becoming tolerant towards violence. And if they are showing us stereotypes on the television, on the media, we are not becoming stereotypical or whatever, but we are tolerating it. 
We think that's normal and that's the problem. And here is the question of autonomy on the second level. Do you get me where I'm going? Okay, so can be the person, can be the state, can be something else, okay? The same thing is with the second point, yeah? We said um, race, yeah? Ethnicity. The same thing. I, I, I would like to hear some examples from your countries because in my country, we don't have this racial problem so much, um, uh, so many racial problems, but, but we have a lot of ethical problems. Yeah. So, would you like to share something? Yeah. Do, do you have that in? Uh, I would say, like in the United States, the depiction between uh, African Americans and okay. the Caucasian American populace, like you see it all the time. Like a, a prime example is the fact that a lot of African American homes are now single parent homes. So, like there was actually a diaper company that on one box they had the two Caucasian parents, but on the other box they had a single black female. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so just re reassuring stereotypes. Yeah. It happens in the media, but it doesn't happen as often as it used to. Okay, but it's still happening. It's still mm -hmm. going on. For example, we have I don't know in Europe, <clears throat> most of the countries I think have some stereotypes about Romas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, though Romas are stereotyped everywhere in Europe, wherever they are. And actually, those like I said again, they are represented as people that actually don't want to work and if you have I don't know for example news huh? a guy killed a woman yeah just first uh, letters of the name and nothing else the same thing happened when Roma did that also the letters but beside that it was written that it was a Roma yeah? they didn't say Slovenian killed a woman, but they said a Roma killed a woman. Do you understand the difference? Mm -hmm. And this is how it gets this message to us, okay, they're like that, that, oh, I don't think they're like that. And then again, it's hard to resist, yeah? It's hard to resist when you are surrounded with this information. And this is the second thing that can happen. So ethnicity is, is a big problem, can be a big problem. Uh, I was mentioning, uh, yeah, would you like to add? Oh, no, no, sorry. Okay, no. Uh, I was mentioning social classes. Can we do a bit on social classes? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we actually have this. For example, we have the like trash TV, which is about uh, what a, a real life TV show, something like this. And it's always showing the uh, lower social classes in a really bad light that they are like do not want to work, that they are really, really dirty, and that they are just we're uneducated and actually stupid children. And like this is a really extreme because these TV shows are like so uh, big at the moment that everybody is watching this and everybody like gets the, uh, the feeling this is how the lower social class actually is. Everybody mm -hmm. is like that. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, yeah, that happens in America a lot, like Jersey Shore. There's a lot of people from the state of New Jersey look really bad. And it happens all the time with, uh, they call it reality TV. Mm -hmm. where it, but it's not the actual reality because the majority of it is scripted, but they tend to take certain ethnic groups and certain mm -hmm. class groups and betray them in a very negative light. Like the, Duck Dynasty. Yeah, oh. Uh, and the problem here is that poor people, yeah, we are getting the message, even, even in sociology, even in science, we have theories that are claiming that. Poor people, they somehow um, learn values that keep them poor. Yeah? They are not prepared to work, they are not prepared to work harder or for education and so on and so on. You have this theories. And on the other hand, let me just name, I don't know, Sex in the City. Um, one of these serious... Um, um, popular series, uh, I don't know, uh, teenage series, Gossip Girl, blah, 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 blah. So everything here is, uh, let's say, a higher class, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay? We don't see uh, TV series, real TV series from, I don't know, poor people, about poor people, how do they live. We see sex and the city and the glamour, and that's it, basically. And we like it, yeah? Everybody likes it. Yeah? And we see how the glamorous life is going on and how 
the media is sending message how everything is possible. And if they have poor people in the end, those poor people in those series become rich. Yeah? Or, or at least, I don't know, their luck somehow turns that they become a part of the... Yeah? Everything is becoming a part of yeah? mm -hmm. higher class. Yeah? So again, again, you can, what I'm trying to say here is the levels of where you can question the autonomy. Yeah? So what is behind it? Again, what is behind it? I think it's just it's a, it's the the comfortability of human beings being comfortable with stereotypes, comfortable with the way we portray certain groups of people and certain things, and I think that the media continues that because we've become so used to it, so why change it? Yeah. So why not? Why do something different when this is what's accepted as normal? This is what they watch anyway. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And the problem is also this myth of romantic love. Yeah, and it, it was. It happened in, I don't know, in, in, let's say, after the Second World War, uh, with development, uh, developing of this, uh, I don't know, really commercial movies, uh, Hollywood and so on. And there's some, even before, it was some kind of born this myth of romantic love. Yeah? Because we all know what love is. We, we all know, yeah, how do you feel when you're in love? But still, when you compare your feelings and compare it to, to those feelings on the, these kind of movies, mm -hmm. it is something different. But still, this myth is so strong that we somehow all seek that. Do you understand? E even I, when I totally... Yeah, I, I'm explaining how wrong this is. But the minute I will walk down, I will seek that love. Do you understand? It's so powerful yeah, that I, I am aware what they are doing to me. I am aware what commercials are doing to me, what they are selling me, what is behind. I did the researches, a lot of them. I know everything, but still, I will do it. Do you understand? Yeah. And this is where I'm going, that the question of autonomy, or let's say this authority behind, like I started, can be politician, can be state, but can be something we cannot actually define. We don't know who or what is the authority behind it. Yeah? Who is the person or, or who is the thing that is doing this stereotypes that we, we all believe in. Yeah? Okay? And the last but not least, I said age, yeah? so old and young people. So how are, basically, my question would be, how are the young people basically represented in the media, in your countries? Can you help me? Sorry? How are the young people represented in the media, in India? Young people, well, uh, the Shona is unemployed and... Uh, okay. Unemployed. Poor. Poor. Okay. Okay. What else? Slovenia. I don't know. I don't watch Slovenia TV. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, really yeah. reckless in our country. Reckless. Naive. Yeah. Naive. Yeah. Foolish. Okay. Yeah. Passive. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. sometimes overly aggressive. Too. Okay. In Slovenia, it's the same. Yeah. The same. Problem. Like that. We are addicted to um, yeah TV and uh, mm -hmm. all this digital stuff. Okay. Okay, perfectly. So the young people are usually represented as those who are living with their parents, doing nothing, they're not interested in anything, they just drink, party, and they're basically free and they're happy. Yeah? And everybody en envies them because they, they, they enjoy life. Yeah? This is the representation of young people. I don't know actually what you're doing here. But, yeah. You have vacation, I guess. You yeah. ended school, so... Uh, what by the way, young people, what age? I think at four uh, years old, it's uh, really doubtful that you will have a work, some work. No, 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 for, no, no, no. When we are talking about young, I mean 15 Teen and above. Teenagers. Teenagers. And, and not only teenagers, till 25, let's say. Okay. Still. In sociology, you're young until, I think, 29, so, yeah, that's the definition. But.
fourth point of, let's say, analysis, how autonomy can be questioned from, not from the person, that auton autonomy of the media and representation can, can be questioned from, from another yeah, angle, yeah? Where does it come from, this stereotype? I mean, what I'm trying to ask you is, I'm not trying to get the answer, I'm just trying that you think where this might be possible, and this could be the level of analysis for, I don't know, for your motion. Yeah, okay? Now, we have, we, just to wrap up a bit, we have a person, we have a government uh, that could own media or influence on the media. We have, let's say, stereotypes that can change our views. So, everything that was said until now is called, um, that is, what I was trying to show you that media's, media is not showing just reality, but it's so-called hyper-reality. This, what I'm trying, what I will elaborate a bit now, is hyper-reality. Yes? So it's, it's a reality <coughs> with some addition. Yeah? And what is with this hyper-reality? Hyper-reality is something that comes actually from the reality, but it's always, it always has some addition. They always add something that makes it different from the reality. But the problem is that we are actually all aware of it, that it happens, but still this content yeah, somehow lives as reality. Yeah? And that is really important to understand because it is so much more stronger, this hyper-reality, because it starts to live as reality. Yeah? And we start to buy things as reality. Yeah? This is real. I want this kind of love. I want this kind of pain. Yeah? Because it starts to live, because it's, it's, you know, it's the same people are doing this, doing it as reality. The same things happen there as actually in the reality. So they take elements from the reality, but they add, there is something in there that makes it different somehow, more, let's say, we would say perfect, yeah? So it's perfect, yeah? And this is the problem, because people, we start believing this kind of things, yeah? even though we don't want to, yeah? But you're smart, yeah? Because you're educated, you're reading stuff. A lot of people don't read. They don't understand what's going on. They, they think that this is possible, that this is real, that, I don't know, if, if, if somebody says, I, you definitely need an iPhone, because it's uh, dashing and... and I don't know, fancy and whatever, in, in, in the process, I really think I need it. Yeah? So, what media actually creates here is so-called, not just hyper-reality, but with hyper-reality uh, comes also, um, um, the English word, but false needs. Needs that are actually not ours, yeah? but needs that are created by our surroundings, so by media. Yeah? So, <clears throat> and why is media creating this? The majority of this kind of information has been created by, uh, let's say, uh, uh, private media. Why? Because private media has one interest, so earning money, like we said. Yeah? And they're, of course, creating needs through ads. Yeah? But the problem is, the public media should have more